Praise the Lord. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Windsor Destiny Center broadcast. Uh, Windsor Destiny Center led by my sister, my wonder twin, my friend, a woman of God, a prophetess, a pastor, Shelly Armstrong. So glad for the invitation today to be with you and to share uh, the word of the Lord with you today. Pastor Shelly uh, has been doing a phenomenal job teaching on uh, the Proverbs 18, 20, and verse 21. And uh, I'm going to share an adjunct message with that today. I'm uh, fairly excited, so I'm going to try and talk and keep calm. Um, but I get excited about the Word of God, and, and amen. I hope that uh, this is a blessing to you. Uh, and so today, um, I want to talk to you about unlocking the power of your words. I need to, let me set a clock so I can know what, uh, what I am doing here. Um, hold on one second. I'm so sorry. All right. I want to talk to you about unlocking the power of your words to access God's power. Again, unlocking the power of your words to access his power. Uh, God has been dealing with me. <clears throat> excuse me. I've been meditating on uh, God's power, God's ability to accomplish purpose. That's what the word power means. Power, power. It is it is the ability to get something done. There is mechanical power. There's electrical power. There there's water, uh, aqua power, water power, right? Steam power. There these are things, implements that that we put in place to get things accomplished and get things done. Well, you and I have have access, if you will, to God's power. We have access to His ability to achieve purpose. <clears throat> Excuse me. God has the ability to do anything. It doesn't matter what what it is. It doesn't matter what you and I need. It doesn't matter what the circumstance situation is. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter who agrees. It doesn't matter who doesn't agree. God has the ability to get things done. I, I appreciate the fact that God does not need to consult my past to determine my future. Uh, what God needs to consult is my heart. He needs to consult my faith. He needs to consult my belief. He needs to consult what I'm trusting him for, to for me to access my future that he desires, the destiny that he has put in front of me. God doesn't need anything. Why? Because he has the ability to handle it now. I get excited about the fact that, that, that whatever life is throwing my way, that God has the ability to deal with it, that God God has the answer. God has the solution for whatever uh, is being thrown my way as far as life comes. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians 3, 20 says, now, now, now I, I get stuck right there. I have to stop sometimes. So, so before we get ready to talk about the scripture, um, when we talk about now, we're, we're talking about under the present set of circumstances, whatever is going on in your life, my life right now, right now, uh, under the present set of circumstances now without anything having to change. See, God doesn't need to wait on the right person to get in office. He doesn't need to wait on the right person to be in place. He doesn't need to wait on circumstances to be favorable. He doesn't need to wait on any of that stuff. God has the ability within himself right now without anything having to change right now under the present set of circumstances right now uh, under our current state of being, whatever you are, whatever your state is right now, God has the power, the ability and the power now. Somebody say now, now, now. He has the ability now. Watch this. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above Everything we can ask a thing. Let's build that again unto him, right? The, the, the faith, the, the trust, the hope, uh, the inspiration, all of that is unto him who is able, who is able. Uh, and I want to throw a word in there and willing. He's not only able, but he is and willing to do, build it now, exceeding abundantly above anything you and I could ask or think. How is it going to happen? according to the power that worketh in us. Now, here's, here's let, let's talk a few minutes about this thing. Number one, we talked about now. So we know that that is under the present set of circumstances that is without anything having to change that is in you and I in our current state of being that God doesn't need to wait on. He can do things right now. Man, I get excited about that. Sometimes I just want to run when I think about that my father has the ability to do things for me right now. Come on. So now unto him, right, that is able unto him that is able unto him that is able unto him that is able not my circumstance not my education not my job not whoever it is that i need to talk to unto him unto god right my trust my hope my reliance my my faith is in him who is 
able, who he is, he has the ability. Come on, somebody. He, he has the ability to get things done. Not only does he have the ability to do it, but God is willing. Now, here's the deal. We need to get a revelation that he's willing. We, 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 you know, we, we kind of done a, a decent job uh, in the church with teaching people about God's power, about teaching people that God is able to do. We, we kind of got people's mindset that maybe, maybe God can get something done for me. <clears throat> if I can flick this faith switch right, if I can believe this way, if I can get a corresponding action, whatever this thing is, we kind of got people believing that we can now, that God has power to do stuff, that God has ability. Uh, the question that many people have is, will God do it for me? Will God do exceeding abundantly above anything that I personally ask or think, or is that for somebody else? Now, you may say, preacher, come on now, that, that's not true. Listen, I've had people tell me, come to me in my face when I get out of the pulpit, say, hey, God is supposed to do that for you because you're a preacher. Can I tell you that this, that what faith, what God will do for one through faith, that God will do for another through faith, that God is not a respecter of person. He is, however, a respecter of your faith. And that's why Pastor Shelley is reminding us of our words. And while we're going through Proverbs 18, uh, 20 and 21, we're going to get to that scripture in a moment. But, but I want to talk to you again right now about God's willingness to move on your behalf. I think because before we can speak our words, before we can have trust, we need to know that God is willing to do it for us. Romans 8, 20, uh, excuse me, 8, 32 says that, that if he has given his son Jesus, he didn't, he didn't hesitate to give him Jesus. How will he not with Jesus freely give you and I all things? I'm telling you, he's willing to do. Let's, let's look at a, a couple of scriptures really quickly, uh, just to establish this fact that God is not only able, but God is also willing to do for you and I. There is a, a scripture found in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, and it's the story of the 10 lepers. And we'll condense for time's sake, but, but it's the story of 10 lepers that went to Jesus and said, watch this now, here's your phrasing, if you will, if, come on now, if you will, if it's your will, if you're willing to do this for us, if you're willing to do this for us, we believe you have the power. The question we have is, are you willing to do this for us? And so they went to Jesus and said, hey, if you will, uh, make us whole. Jesus said, go Show yourself to the priest, which is what was prescribed in that day for them to be uh, medically uh, excused and put back into society. And the Bible says that the 10 lepers went. And it says, as they went, watch this now, they get more on the way than when they start. They get, come on, they got more on the way than when they started. The Bible says, as they went, that they were clean. And, and nine of them, the Bible says, went on and, and, and showed themselves to the priest and did whatever they were doing. Excuse me, but one of them came back to say thank you. <laughs> one of them came back to be grateful. One of them said, listen, Lord, I know that, that I did what you told me to do. I, I was obedient. I, I obeyed your instruction and I went to do it. And Father, I, I saw that as I was going, that my, the, the, the leprosy stopped, that, that limbs stopped falling off and, and, and my skin stopped uh, deteriorating. All the things that are caused by leprosy stopped. I don't mean to holler at you, but I guess get excited at it. said all these things that stopped and, and, and I had to turn, turn around and come back can say thank you. Come on. How, how many of us are grateful to God for what he's already done? Thank you, God. I, I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate what you've already done. And God, I'm in faith and I'm thanking you now for what you are going to do in the future. God, I just don't want to take a moment right now to say thank you. Thank you. Somebody just join me right now real quick. Just God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I'm grateful. Thank you. Father, you're a good God. Thank you. You keep your word. Thank you. You're faithful, God. Thank you that you're on my side. Thank you, God. He, he came back to say thank you and Jesus said to this one where are the other nine? That, that's the first question. I, I've done more for people, for more people than just you. I, I bless people more than just you. I, I don't know about those other people, but God, I'm going to be the one to come back and tell you thank you, because I certainly appreciate all that you've done for me and all that you are doing in my life. And Jesus said to that one leper, he said, listen, you've come back to say thank you. And because of that, son, you will be made whole. Now, now, now the word whole there, uh, you know, these other lepers, the, the leprosy stopped growing or uh, uh, start affecting their body. The ravages of it stopped and all that stuff, I believe, was in place. But this one, the Bible said, was made whole. Uh, in other words, this one now, where skin had been 
gone away, it now started growing back. Where damage had been done on the inside, it had now been repaired. Why? Because he was made whole because of his gratitude and saying thank you to God. But listen, that's another message. That's another message. What, where else? Can we see where God was willing? Well, where there was a woman with an issue of blood. Come on, somebody. Uh, and the woman got up and she said, she said, because I'm talking about words to access the power of God. This woman said within herself that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. She, she had faith in the provision of God. She had faith that God was willing to move on her behalf. She said that she just needed to get in proximity to where the power of God was moving. Listen, I, another side note, side note. Some of y'all need to get your butt back in church. Oh God, some of y'all need to go to the assembly of the saints. The Bible says to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much more as you see the day approaching, get yourself together. Again, let me admonish you, get your butt. If you've not been, get your butt back in church. So this woman said now, if she said within herself that if I can touch the hem of this garment, that I will be made whole. She didn't have a question about God's power. She didn't even have a question about God's willingness. What she had a question was, was can I press to the point that I can get close enough, come on, to touch the hem of his garment because I know within myself that he is able and he is willing to do something for me. So the Bible says that this woman pressed her way through the crowd. Now this woman broke the law. She was had an issue of blood. She was not legal to be out in public. She was not legal to be out in society. Uh, Jewish society at the time said that she was unclean. But the Bible says that this woman pressed her way through and she got up to where Jesus was and she touched the hem of his garment. And watch this now, virtue went out of his body and the woman was made whole of that disease. Why? Because she said words now, she said to herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Whole. Watch this. One more. Uh, uh, this one is found in John chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. This is the man at the pool of Bethesda. Now, quickly, that story is about uh, an angel would come down once a year and, and trouble a pool. And the Bible says that whoever touched into that pool first would be made whole of whatever disease they had. So it didn't matter whether it was leprosy, you know, whatever it was at the time, that if they were the first person to step in, they would be made whole. Well, this man. Um, was approached by Jesus. Come on now, I, the God, the, you talk about willingness, willingness. This man, the Bible said, had been there for years. I, I, I believe this man had been there for 12 years, right? Coming uh, to get this, hoping to get in this pool. And God shows up to him, Jesus, who is willing. That's the point I'm trying to get you now, that God is willing to exercise his power on our behalf. That, that he said to him, will you be made whole? Uh, and now be, the man didn't answer the question. He didn't say yes. He didn't say no. He said, listen, I've got no man to put me in. He started making excuses. I have no man to put me in when the water is troubled. Uh, he was answering in a roundabout way, but it wasn't a yes or no answer. Jesus is like, dude, I didn't ask you uh, if you had a man to put you in. I didn't ask you if you had help. I didn't ask you about the circumstances that are going on around you. What I asked you is, do you have a desire, come on somebody, to be made whole? Do, do you have a desire? You and I right now, I'm talking to us now. Do do we have a desire to be made whole? Do we have a desire to allow God to get into our lives and to make us H O W H O L E to be made whole, to be made whole. So, so the, the man, uh, you know, long story short, Jesus healed the man and the man got, got healed. Again, I just want you to know, based on Ephesians 3.20, this is just a little biblical evidence that God is not only able, but he is willing to move on our behalf. Now, I want to uh, get, I've got pages of notes, but uh, as I was going over this, I found that I was preaching the objectives. So I'm going to just do that. I'm going to just teach the objectives and uh, maybe Pastor Shelly will invite me back and, and I can complete some more of this. But, but again, now I've been fascinated, captivated recently, if you will, by this 
this the, the 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 fact that God has given us power that that God has made his power available to us that that God wants us to to utilize the power he gave his power for us Jesus died so that you and I can have access to God not just to get to heaven but he wants us to have access to God and to the things of God how do you know that preacher well the bible says that when Jesus died that the veil in the temple was rent in two that was symbolic of the holy of holies was no longer there that we can now freely walk in and access God. Come on, I I don't know about anybody else, but but I can't get to the president of the United States or any of these other countries. I can't get to people, uh, presidents of companies and all these other places. But I can walk into the prayer closet and get in with the emperor, creator, owner of the universe. Why? Because Jesus died so that we could have access access to that. Now. Pastor Shelley has been uh, using as a core scripture, Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 and 21. Uh, and it, it says that uh, power, the power of life and death is in the tongue, right? Uh, the power of life and death are in the tongue. So, so objective number one that I want to share with you today is uh, that we need to understand the power of words, that, that we need to understand. Remember now, the word uh, power means the ability to achieve purpose. So we, we need to get a revelation of the, the power or the ability of words to achieve purpose. That, that, that words, we need a revelation that words carry power. Let, let, let's say that again now. Words carry power. Words were engineered. Words were designed. Words were created to carry power. Words, if you use a word, it can hurt somebody's feelings. Words, depending upon how you use a word, can fill somebody with great joy. Words, depending upon how you use a word, can, can wait on, on somebody, uh, build pride in somebody. I remember I was in an organization one time and, and uh, this, now this, this is not uh, the Christian way of speaking, but uh, there was one of the, the, the gentlemen that I looked up to, uh, he would say stuff like good, you know, and he would use an expletive behind that, McLeod, good, right? And I, I lived, right? I was, man, I was hanging out, waiting on him to give me those words. Why? Because he was somebody that I looked up to and those words affirmed me. And when he said to me, good expletive, McLeod, man, I was on cloud nine. Uh, uh, God told us that you and I can speak to a mountain and that mountains could move. We could speak to mountains and mountains could move. Why? Because words carry power words carry power so 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 the first objective the first thing i want us to, to do is to get a revelation an understanding of the fact that the our words have power that that words were designed engineered if you will by god to carry power proverbs again 18 20 through 21 that uh, teaches us that the power of life and death is in the word, right? Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. This is uh, New King James Version, uh, right? That What that's telling us is that we should shape our, that the words have the ability to shape our experiences, both good experiences or bad experiences. I, I remember one time I was in college and I was not feeling well in my body and we had just read a book, my, my roommate and I had just read a book by Jerry Savelle called If the Devil Can't Steal Your Joy, He Can't Steal Your Goods. And so I was laying in the bed, like, you know, I'm a milker, right? If I, b before I learned to walk in faith, if I was sick, I was oh, you know, you might well just gave me a little bell. I'm going to be ringing, mama, somebody come take care of me, right? Oh, I'm just horrible, right? But uh, so I'm in the bed and my roommate just opens my bedroom door, throws the book on the bed and says to me, a heel man uh, isn't laying around sick. Uh, what was he doing? He he was telling me now, what are you saying? What are you getting in agreement with? Are you in agreement with the symptoms of your body or are you in agreement with the word of God? And what are you saying about that? Because what I was saying was, I'm sick. I was saying, I don't feel well. I'm saying, I feel like I'm going to throw up. I was saying all the things that I did not want in my life instead of staying by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Now, I'm not denying that my body was feeling bad, that my stomach was feeling nauseous, or all these things were going on. But what I decided to do was to get in agreement with what God had said about me, which was that Jesus himself has borne all sickness and all disease in his own body on the tree. And by his stripes, I, Roy McLeod, am healed. Healed. And so I got up out of that bad bed feeling nauseous. I got up out of that bed not feeling well. I got up out of that bed feeling sick. And I sat in the living room, all of that, and start confessing that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. 
Come on. So, so sometimes we get too whipped out in our thought processes because our bodies, our emotions, whatever circumstances are going on. And instead of getting in confession or in agreement with the word of God, we start getting agreement with our circumstances, which uh, again, uh, the words that come out of our mouth begin to shape our experiences, whether those experiences are good experiences or bad experiences are going to be determined by what we say out of our mouth. I was in, in Rome a couple of years ago, and uh, I was on a train riding from one point to the next point, literally a three-minute ride on this train, and I put my phone in my pocket inadvertently, and by the time I got to the stop, I was getting off on three minutes, my phone was gone. Well, the people that were with me, they started going, oh, you know, losing their mind and all this other stuff about my phone being gone, and I said to them, no, 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 I am here to enjoy myself in Europe, and I'm not going to let a phone being stolen stolen, stop my joy. Come on, somebody. Well, what happened? I had learned that, that the power of life and death was in my tongue, that I could get an agreement with them. I could get an agreement with what people say is okay. I could get an agreement with all that stuff and start ruining my trip to Europe. Now, wait a minute. I didn't pay thousands of dollars to get here. I'm going to be spending thousands of dollars here. I'm going to be spending a bunch of time here, and I can either ruin this trip because somebody decided to steal my phone, or I can get an agreement with God that God supplies all my needs, including the phone, that God is going to make sure that I'm safe, that, that, that God is with me, even in the midst of trouble. I, one of my favorite scriptures, Psalms 118.6, says the Lord is on my side. Come on, somebody. I will not fear. And that's one of the things that I confess frequently, that the Lord is on my side, that the Lord is on my side, the Lord is on my side. Somebody need to get a revelation and start confessing out of your mouth, too, that the Lord is on your side right? Our words, our words can shape our life. Our words speak life into a situation. Our words can bring hope. Our words can bring healing. Our words can bring breakthrough. Our words can bring death, fear, or destruction. It's up to you. Good or bad, the power of life and death is in your tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Uh, think about this now. <clears throat> Excuse me. When, when we look at this thing on the positive end, in the book of Genesis, uh, the Bible says, God says, let there be. You you pick it. He, he said, let there be light. Let the firmament divide. Like, he let it bring forth fruit. In the beginning, God just spoke one thing after another. The entirety of creation, as we know it, was done because God spoke words. God knew that his words had power. Excuse me. He said it, and it happened. He said, let there be light. And? There was light, right? And he did all these things. And then every day he went back to check and it said, and, and it was good, right? God spoke stuff and it was good. What was God doing? He called things that were not there. I'm not, I'm not going to teach that from Romans, but that's in the book of Romans if we want to le learn that, right? He called things that were not there as if they were. Let's stop that now. He called things that were not as though they were. The Bible says the darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water and God said, let there be light. What happened? Darkness was there. What he wanted was light. So he used his words to call what he wanted. Now notice, he did not deny that darkness was there. He didn't say, no, it ain't dark. He didn't say, no, I can see clearly. Now he didn't say all that. He did not lie. What he said was he got into agreement with what he wanted to happen. So he said, let there be light. And there was light. Just like you and I can speak to our body. Let there be healing. We can speak to our finance. Let there be abundance. We can speak to our children. Let there be peace. We can speak what calling those things that we don't have right now as though they were or calling what we want to come into existence. It's a whole nother teaching, but we have the ability given by God because we are accessing his power to do that. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so we have realized that that our words can shape relationships. Our words can shape our health. Our words can even shape our sense of purpose. But we got to learn to start utilizing our mouth on purpose. We we got to start thinking before we speak. We got I used to write stuff down like I want to make sure I'm saying this. 
I want to make sure, right? Like right now, since my, my roommate told me a sick man does not lay around, I that's been 30, 40 years ago. I want you to understand that that is still what I'm doing. Now, you may see me, uh, you know, if I get sick, thank God I don't get sick frequently. But if I'm sick, I might have a blanket on. I might be trying to get me some tea or chicken soup or whatever it is you're supposed to do. But I'm also confessing that by his stripes, I'm healed. <laughs> Himself more sick, right? I, I'm, I'm not going to be moved by what I see. I'm not going to be moved by what I feel, what I am moved by is what God said because the Bible says that he is not a man that he lies, neither the son of man that he's going to change his thought uh, once he has said something and it comes out of our mouth, uh, his mouth. Next, uh, we need to recognize that words shape reality, right? They can bring blessing or they can bring cursing. Words shape how other people perceive us. They even uh, experience or shape the experiences of our life. Like if you start saying stuff like, I don't never have any luck, man. It, this never seems to work for me. You know, I don't know if you know those people, but I got those, I call them schlep rocks. Shut rocks in here, right? I, I, it don't ever work for me. Wowzy, wowzy, wow, bam, bam. Uh, it, it's not working for me, right? But you want to start saying things that, that you want to believe and have it line up according to the word of God. It will uh, line up according to your word. You should be one of those people that declare God's favor is upon me. Come on. Uh, yeah. When you start declaring that, when you start getting into agreement with what God's word says, faith comes by Hearing, hearing by the word of God. So, so when I start getting there, I'm going to start disclaiming what the word says, uh, right? I, favor surrounds me like a shield. I, I, I believe that in Jesus' name, that when I show up, wherever I show up and I need favor, once I get in that vicinity, that there's a, I, I see an invisible faith shield around me and people start coming into contact with that shield and they give me favor. They, they start blessing me because I, they're in my shield of favor. And those are the words that are coming out of my mouth. That favor surrounds me. I told you Psalms 118.6, one of my favorite scriptures. The Lord is on my side. Favor is not surrounding me because Roy is all that great, grand, or work, glorious, or wonderful. No, no, no. Faith surrounds me because he said faith should surround me like a shield. He said that favor was mine. He said that he would do exceeding abundantly above what I ask or think. Because he said that, and I repeat what he said, then I get, come on somebody, I get the favor that he says. Let me tell you a story. When I was, you know, you pick pick any number of stories from my life, but one of my favorite ones, uh, I always tell people if I go to hell, it's going to be for speeding, right? I love to drive fast. I don't do it uh, much now, but I will do it, uh, you know, full disclosure. So I was uh, with some friends one year and we were driving from Lansing, Michigan to Kalamazoo, Michigan, which is about a 45 minute, 50 minute drive. Right. And so I was driving. I was doing 105. That's correct. 105 miles an hour uh, driving, trying to get to this church service all the time. And uh, my friend and his wife were in the back seat. He had just finished preaching. And <clears throat> so I'm driving on my way there. And, and then the, the we start hearing sirens and they are starting to laugh and go crazy. Right. Because I always tell people I'm God's favorite. Right. And so they're there in the back and they're just laughing. They're rolling and going there. Yeah. God's favorite about to get this big ticket and all this other stuff. Now, you can be moved by what you hear. You can be moved by what you see. You can be moved by what other people say, think, or believe, or you can be moved by your relationship with God, by what God has promised in his word. So I said, listen, now, I took my foot off the gas pedal, let the car start slowing down. I said, Father, I know that I'm in sin. I know that I'm wrong. I know that this is not uh, the law and, and I'm breaking it. But Father, I'm going to ask for favor right now. I'm going to ask you to allow this police car to come up behind me, go to, to the right and arrest somebody else. Well, now they're in the back, right? Roll, because this is crazy. This is, I'll, I'll admit it, this is ludicrous. But what you and I need to understand is that faith asks uncommon questions. Let me say that again. Faith asks uncommon questions. Well, preacher, is there any Bible for that? Sure. There's a little man with two verses in the Bible. Name is Jabez, right? They have a book, The Prayer of Jabez. Uh, singers have sung songs about the prayer of Jabez. He simply said this, oh, that thou would bless me indeed. Come on. And God blessed him indeed. God made his blessings visible. So I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to try. And so I said, Father, thank you that you would have them come behind me, go to the right, and arrest somebody else. Well, 
Thank God, as God would have it, God is my witness. I promise you, I'm not lying to you. This police car came up behind us, went over to the right, and pulled over somebody else's car. Why? Because favor surrounds me like a shield. That's my confession. That's what I believe, that favor surrounds me like a shield. Now, do I get 100% results? No, but I get like 97. I, it's up there. It's, it's high. I, you know, I remember another time that uh, I was rushing to get my mother's 88th birthday, and I was taking her to get her hair done, and I had to pick up somebody before getting get her and all this stuff going on. And so I was speeding. And I ended up uh, doing a rolling stop at a at a stop sign. A police car came behind me and pulled me over. And so the man started asking for license, registration, all the stuff you do. And I said, officer, is there any way you can not give me a ticket? Now, he, he said, what? I said, is there any way I can just get off with a warning today? I, I really don't want a ticket, officer. He said, well, you've not shown me your registration. I'm like... I don't have my registration, and, and I honestly didn't have it. He, he said, "I don't have, I don't have it." He said, "Well, I can write you a voidable." I said, "Officer, that would be wonderful." And so the man wrote me a voidable ticket, and and all I had to do was go down to the police station, show my registration, and everything was taken care of. What am I telling you? That there is power in your words, like even to ask a question. There's power in your word. Why? Because God has given us access to ability and authority that we can use to shape our lives. Words have the ability, right? That's why I'm confessing that God's power is upon me. I'm confessing that God's power is with me. I'm confessing that I am the favorite of God because God really does love me. Again, we want to get this concept that our words, our words, my words, say, say that with me. Say, my words have power. Say it again. My words have power. Say your name. Roy's words have power power. Say la. Let that get in you for a moment. You need to get a revelation that your words have power, right? God has given our words power. Uh, think of how, how powerful it is when someone speaks words of encouragement over your life, right? I believe in you. God's got great plans for you. Uh, th th this These words can fuel hope, right? I'm a teacher and I, I try and make sure that my kids know that I love them. Like, like we have fun and we do all this other stuff. I'm going to tell them, do you need to fix this or whatever's going on, but I'm always going to be building them up because I don't want them going through life with a bad experience, something that I cause in their life, because I know that words have power. Now, when I think about this, um, my, my, my former pastor, Bishop Benjamin Jabert, God bless his soul, uh, who's in heaven now, um, I remember one time, uh, well, a couple of times, two, two things, one in particular. One, he, he used to call me Roy can handle anything McLeod. That man, and that that just made my chest stick out again because it's someone whose opinion I valued, someone who I wanted uh, to to please, right? And so he would say Roy can handle anything. And so whenever he gave me an assignment, it didn't matter what the assignment was, whether I had the skill set right then, whether I had the knowledge right then, whether I had the ability right then, did not matter because I knew that he had faith in me based on what he said to me. Roy can handle anything McLeod. I had faith. I believed that. I could handle anything because he put those words of faith in me. And, and so we, we need to understand that as, as, as people, that we have the ability to speak words of life over people. So number one, I want you to understand that your words carry power. Just say that with me one more time. My, role, my words carry power. One more time. My words, my words carry power power. Your words, my words have the ability to carry power. I got to speed up a little bit, man. That's only number one. Number two, number two, uh, I want us to acknowledge Jesus's role in accessing God's power because the power of our words is only valid because Jesus gave you and I access to the power of God. He gave us access right through a new and living way that our words are energized. Our words are empowered. Our words are built on the fact that God has given us his word and you you and I can get in agreement with his word. And when we get in agreement with his word, then we can do anything. You need to understand that man was engineered so that we could speak words. We were engineered so that our words would have power. Think about how crazy this is, man. One of, one of the stories in the Bible that, <clears throat> excuse me, constantly blows my mind is the, the Tower of Babel, right? Or Babel, however you pronounce it, right? And, 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 and it's a story of People who spoke the same language, the Bible says, people who got in unity and people who got into agreement. And that's one way to preach that that 
past their scripture, right, that we got in the unit. Uh, another way is that nothing that they imagined was impossible to them. That That's another way to preach that. But man, can you get the power of the fact that because the people were one and the people could communicate that God said nothing that they imagined would be impossible to them. He did not come down and say, listen, you cannot build a physical tower to a spiritual place. He didn't say you don't have the ingenuity to get what you want to get done, done. What he said was, was that because the people spoke the same language and the people were as one, that nothing they desired would be impossible or imagined would be impossible to them. He had to confound their language so that their words were not the same words, <clears throat> excuse me, and they could not understand one another. Why? Because if we can get together and we can speak the same words, those words have, how many movements have been started across the world because people spoke words and people received those words into them and those words gave out. Listen, again, good or bad, good or bad. You know, Hitler spoke words that, that caused an entire uh, generation of people to be wiped out. He spoke words that caused hatred and confusion and pain. All those words, and Hitler changed the course of the world because of words that he spoke. But you've got also a Mahatma Gandhi. You've got a, a Mother Teresa who spoke words of love and lo words of empowerment, words that caused people's lives to change. We need to get a revelation that Jesus has given us, you and I, access to God's power, God's power. Mark 11, chapter uh 20, excuse me, Mark chapter 11, verses 20 through 22 through 24, it says, Jesus said, have faith in God. So, so the first, the first uh, criteria here is that you and I have faith in God. We, we got to have faith in God. Really, the Greek there is have the God kind of faith. But I like it either way, right? The God kind of faith, faith in God. That says, whosoever uh, shall say to this mountain, whosoever, you soever, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, not down in the heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, E-T-H, King James, those things which he saith, that, that is to say and continue to say, to say and continue to say, to say and continue to say. I have been saying for over 30 years, I'm God's favorite. I said it and I continue to say, I'm God's favorite. I say and I continue to say that I'm God's favorite. Why? Because whosoever shall say and not doubt in their heart, but shall believe that those things that they sayeth shall come to pass, they shall have whatsoever they say it. Here's what you and I need to get from that, that Jesus is revealing uh, through him that you and I have authority to access his, to access God's miraculous power by aligning our faith and our word with what he said. We, we have the ability to get in line with what God said. And when we get in line with what God said, it gives us access to the ability of God. It gives us access to the thoughts of God. It gives us access to the ways of God. How, why? All because we align our words and our faith with what God said. He said, whosoever believes in him, <clears throat> excuse me, the works that he does and greater works shall he do. Well, what did he do? He spoke healing. He spoke deliverance. He spoke life. Right. And through faith in him, we have the same power to do the same thing. We can speak life. We can speak power. We can speak deliverance. We can speak healing. All of those things are within us. Why? Because it is not us, but it's the father doing the work through us by you and I simply a getting in agreement with what he said. Now, 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 he said, whoever should say to the mountain. Well, what is a mountain? Well, mountains represent obstacles, whether that's a health obstacle, whether it's a financial struggle, whether it's a personal challenge, it does not not matter what the mountain is in your life. Jesus tells us that by faith, we can speak to the mountain and command them to move. And when we speak God's words over them and speak God's words to them, <clears throat> excuse me, his power works in our lives. More Sorello is where I got it from. But more Sorello said some years ago, he said, I stopped telling my God how big my problems are and start telling my problems how big my God is. Come on. So, somebody needs to get a revelation that our God is bigger. Our God is greater. Our our God is stronger. Come on. I, again, let me stop. Yeah. But, but, but we need to get a revelation, man, because my life changed when I learned to get my mouth and my words in alignment with what God said. I learned that I could access the power of God. Uh, listen now, the scripture pastor Shelley's uh, God 
have for us, Proverbs 18, 20 to 21, that we become comfortable with the fruit of our lips. We become comfortable. When you and I can become comfortable with speaking God's word, comfortable with expecting God based upon what he said, because we are sons and daughters uh, of, of the living God, that we have access to this power, we can speak to mountains and mountains will be moved. We, we, we have God's power. Listen, let, let's say, well, let, let's use me. I had financial problems. I, listen, I was so broke, I couldn't pay attention. I, I was so broke that, that I ran out of money long before I ran out of month. And there, there was no way to get those two. But, but what did I do? Uh, I learned that according to Philippians 4.19, that my God, Roy's God, shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Now, I started <clears throat> excuse me, to believe that, but I also started to confess that, that my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches riches in glory. Now, here's what you, you need to get. For you and I to get supernatural intervention, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The Bible also says to follow those who through faith and through patience have obtained the promises. So I, I was uh, in church. Well, I know I wasn't in church. I purchased a tape series from then Pastor Ben Jabert. And he talked about how he had jumped several social economic classes simply by confessing the word over uh, his wallet. Now, uh, he, he was teaching from Proverbs uh, where it says, why is there, Proverbs 17, 16, says, why is there the price of wisdom in the hand of a fool, seeing that they have no heart for it? In other words, why why are we given money? Why are we given resources? Why are we given the ability uh, to, to get do better to a fool because they have no heart? They have no desire. They have no want to, to do better. Not mentally, but they have nothing on the inside of them that says, I'm going to get up and do this. Many people are going to hear the word and not act on the word. Uh, Be ye doers, the Bible says, and not hearers only. Watch this. So, so he said that he began to confess to his wallet. So I, my wallet is not with me right now, but, but I started confessing to my wallet. I was baroque. Remember I told I was baroque. Do you hear me? I was so broke. Uh, one year my mom was, um, in Alabama and her brother had been, uh, had died here in Michigan and we didn't have enough money to put her on a plane. We didn't have enough money to send anybody with her. We had to put my mother on a bus. She rode the bus from Alabama to Michigan by herself with the burden of her brother's death on her. Now, now, man, that, that tore me up. That broke my heart. And, and I started to confess and started starting to believe. And it got to the point that a few years later, one of my mother's other brothers uh, was sick. We were at a wedding in North Carolina and my mom's brother got sick while we were there. So we left North Carolina, went to Alabama, bought my mom some clothes, left her there for a little bit, flew her home and then start flying her back to see her brother every couple of weeks. And then when he died, we all got on the plane, flew down there together, did the service, came back home and didn't miss a financial beat. Why? Because I learned that my God, come on somebody, supplies all my needs. Now, <clears throat> let me make, make this clear. I had stuff to do. If a man don't work, a man don't eat, right? But I needed to get the wisdom of God on how to deal with my finances, the wisdom of God uh, on what to do, as well as the favor of God to open financial doors for me <clears throat> so that I could get things in my life. So I started confessing to my wallet. Every time I got my, my, my wallet out, whether I was paying for something at the store or, or, or you know, at church because I was getting ready to give or whatever was going on, I would pull, um, I would pull my... My, my wallet out and I would say, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for hundreds of thousands on the way to millions for the kingdom and hundreds of thousands on the way to millions for me. That, that in the name of Jesus, I release the angels of the Lord to go to the north, the south, the east, the west, to, to get resources, to open opportunity, to bring me into the place that I can have the financial resources and ability that God wants me to have and to endure. We, again, we need to understand that our words have power. I did not realize we we're taking this long, right? <clears throat> so, so, so I want you just to get that fact that our words have power. Next, I, I want us to, to, to realize and understand that God hears every word that we speak, right? Right. So when we're speaking words, we're not just throwing them in the atmosphere, but God hears and then responds based on what we hear, what we say. Now, now this is a revelation to me. This, this helped me so much, and I pray that it helps you. And I'm going to end on this point. But, but God uh, hears every word that we say. Ezekiel uh, 35, 13 tells us that people blaspheme against God with their words. He heard it. 
<clears throat> excuse me, Malachi 2, 17 says that people weary God with their words by complaining that evil people seem to prosper. But, but God was not indifferent to what they said. He said that he hears every word and he says that you weary me with your words, whether those are words of complaint or whether those are words of faith, you and I can weary God because God hears and is not indifferent to what we're saying. Now, I want to read uh, this one. I think I'll close on this. This is Matthew, excuse me, not Matthew, Malachi uh, chapter 3, Malachi 3, uh, verses 13 through 16. Uh, yeah, this is the famous scripture of uh, a teaching about tithing. But uh, I want to read something different here. 16. It says, then they that feared the Lord spake. They that feared the Lord, what? Spake. They that feared, feared the Lord spake. You know what? Let's go back a little bit. I'm going to read verse 13. It says, your words have been stout against me. So here's what God is saying now. He, he's talking to his people. He said, listen, your words have been stout against against me. You you have been saying things that that are that are anti me, things that don't bless me, things that don't lift me up, things that don't show your faith to me. He said your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet you have said, what have we spoken so much against thee? He said, you have said it is vain to serve God and what profit is it in it? Oh my He said, listen now, you are complaining about serving me because in your estimation you're not being blessed fast enough. Is that really why we're for serving God? He, he, in your estimation, things are not happening the way you want them to happen. So you're saying it is vain to serve God. Let's read on. <clears throat> Verse 14. Again, you have said that it's vain to serve God and what profit is in it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. And now we call the poor, the proud happy. Yea, they that the work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. So now they started recounting <clears throat> all this stuff that other people are getting, all this benefit that's happening to other people. But their words, their words, their words are stout against God. Verse 16, then, then, then the royal cloud, then the whoever you are, then they that fear the Lord. Come on, spake. We, they said something different. Then they that feared the Lord spake and said one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. Come on. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spared his own son, uh, even that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the right and the wicked between him that serveth God and him that serveth the devil. That, that, that last part is, I just want you and I to have a remembrance and get a revelation that God uh, is on our, not only on our side, but God hears what we say. That, that our words can be stout against him or our words can even build God up. And as we build up God, that God responds to us based upon what we say and, and how we act in faith towards him. Thank you. Uh, for the time of access to your life. I pray that uh, this ministers to you, that, that, that God can use this to lift you up and to bless you. Uh, I want to encourage you to pray for Windsor Destiny Center. Pray for Pastor Shelley and the mission that God has given her for those that will be coming on to share the word and pray for one another that our lives will grow. Father, we thank you now that according to your word, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that we shall be saved. And Father, I thank you that we believe that there are people that are listening today that want to make you the Lord of their life. They want to give their life to you. They don't want habits, hurts, or hindrances to stop them or slow them down from the destiny that you've designed for their life. And so, Father, we pray together, Father, that you would minister your life of healing and deliverance to them. Thank you, Father, that by your words, the declaration that if we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we shall be saved. And so, Father, we thank you that we're in agreement and in faith that people are being saved today through this ministry, through Windsor Destiny Center, through the work that you've called the woman of God to do. Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. We appreciate you. And thank you that we're walking in newness of life. Now, as I leave, I just want to challenge you and encourage you to do this, to change what you were saying, to, to, to get God's word on your situation and allow the power of God's word, the access that we get through the word to change your life. I love you. I want to remind you of this, that no matter what circumstance or situation you face, when you face it with the Lord Jesus Christ, there is hope. God bless you both. Bye-bye.